Hi everyone. I thought I'd do a quick lecture as I was reading through your all's uh, quizzes over the past uh, two quizzes actually as you've had to interact with uh, our one of our textbooks The War of Lamb by John Howard Yoder um, and some of you have raised important questions about Yoder's personal background. If you haven't read anything about his uh, personal background you can just google something like the case against John Howard Yoder and you'll find in his background um, several instances of uh, accusations of sexual misconduct um, that he had uh, that students of his have uh, had filed against him or filed a complaint against him and so uh, this uh, was about his history he, he was accused of sexual misconduct of sexual abuse and also of the misuse of power as a professor, uh, especially with his students. Um, he was also very resistant to um, any kind of discipline, both from uh, the seminary that he was teaching at, the Mennonite Seminary, um, and then uh, by church discipline. So he is somewhat resistant to discipline as these allegations were raised. Um, in terms of his resistance, uh, it's not really clear uh, because in all of his writings he talks about what do we do with uh, someone who sinned against us, how do we resolve conflict, those kinds of things. And you've even seen that in your readings on the War of the Lamb. Um, but he, he argued or had an, an idea in his mind or justified his actions by um, what he called experimenting with a unique uh, Christian sexual ethic and challenging the traditional mores and values of the culture. Um, of course, this is just one more way that um, anybody can justify their own sinful behavior. So, um, so, but that was his, some of his reasoning behind that, some of the, uh, some of the content of the letters that he wrote to some of his students um, use this reasoning um, we don't know exactly what he meant by that, um, but uh, it was odd and obviously justifying his own uh, sexual misconduct. Um, in 1997, uh, Yoder passed away after uh, teaching at a Mennonite seminary and then, then teaching at Notre Dame for, se for several years. Um, and so he passed away in 1997. Our textbook is written in 2009, and it was uh, Glenn Stassen, who was my advisor, knew about the allegations against Yoder, was friends with John, um, and he he uh, took up some of John's uh, letters and some of his thoughts and decided to write a posthumous book um, with Matt Hampshire and Mark Thiessen Nation, um, both Mennonite theologians. And so, uh, uh, you know, several questions have been raised about why we use this textbook, um, those kinds of things, uh, because of Yoder's past. And I think those are important in live questions. And I do want to say, uh, first and foremost, that if you've uh, experienced any um, difficulty or any triggers or any um, hurt or harm, let me just apologize and ask for forgiveness on that. Uh, I had no intention of that um, with Yoder and making you read this book um, as one of our textbooks. Um, I, but if you've had some kind of experience like that, um, especially in our cultural moment where this conversation is uh, out in public and very um, present right now, which it should be present right now, even with the stuff that went on with Harvey Weinstein and now uh, in the last couple of days, but really over a long course of time, Larry Nasser um, with the USA Gymnastics. It's just a, it's a cultural moment that has uh, given us eyes to see and ears to hear. So I uh, want to just apologize if that uh, caused any harm for any of you, really. Um, sexual abuse and sexual misconduct is not isolated to uh, male to female relationships but that's where it happens most consistently and so um, let me just say that I'm I'm sorry if that happened I 
I had no intention of that. Um, what you have in this book, and one of the reasons that I have kept it as uh, one of our textbooks, is really uh, from knowing Glenn Stassen, really Glenn's writing what he wished Yoder would have said towards the end of his life. Um, and so it's Glenn's voice, it's Matt's voice, it's Mark Thiessen Nation's voice, um, more so than it's John Howard Yoder's voice, although they're using Yoder's ideas and, uh, and putting these ideas in his context. Um, and so that's one of the reasons that I kept the textbook, and you'll find um, similarities between this textbook and the Just Peacemaking textbook written by Glenn or edited by Glenn as well. Um, very similar ideas. And so really this book is what Glenn wishes that Yoder would have said. Um, all that to say, it doesn't mean I have, it's a live question of whether I will use the textbook again. Um, and, uh, I'm in conversations about the, that particular question. Um, the, there's a fundamental question that we have to ask ourselves as we interact with, uh, important ideas around peacemaking, but in general, as we study theology and as we study philosophy, anything in the humanities where people are telling us about ethics um, and really in anything um, as they're writing about ideas and uh, and trying to articulate important principles and especially in the conversation that we're having right now um, we have to ask the question what do we do with people's ideas whose lives don't match their ideas whose lives are a mess and how do we um, and who've caused uh, problems and have abused people and violated them. And it's very ironic that Yoder would, would write about pacifism and nonviolence and power so much and yet uh, violate all those uh, principles that he articulated, even in the resolving conflict and church discipline principles that he articulates. Uh, he just didn't live up to those things in his own personal life. And so uh, that's a, an important question that we have to ask. We don't want to commit the genetic fallacy and say that because somebody did something wrong or abusive or oppressive that all their ideas are wrong or their thoughts or the things that they're talking about or writing about are wrong. But we do also want to take into consideration, especially when we're doing Christian ethics, um, what kind of character, how does their, how does their lives match their words? And it's important to, um, to have that as close as possible when we're making arguments as, as Christian ethicists. Um, so I just wanted to acknowledge the difficulty, acknowledge the tension, and uh, say that I feel the tension with this particular textbook. And I may just consider, uh, abandoning any text by Yoder in the future. The only challenge is, is that he, especially in this conversation, he was the leading, one of the leading theologians in America in the 20th century that was arguing for nonviolent, um, nonviolent action when it came to conflict. And so, uh, each of, each of our authors really, um, are interacting with Yoder and his argument. And and in a time, especially during the Cold War, after the Vietnam War, after the Civil Rights Movement, when Yoder was writing, um, he was articulating a different kind of ethic that uh, we to use violence as a means to a just end was not the way of Christ. Um, and so that's an important conversation. It's just whether we use Yoder as a jumping off point even though he probably was a leading theologian. So as you can see, um, I'm conflicted about the ideas that he put out there um, and the life and, uh, and the lives that he affected uh, by abusing his power and his authority. So um, yeah, I don't have an easy answer for this. For now, this is, this is a textbook that you know y'all are through it already. And so it's an important, um, it's an important conversation and important questions. And again, I want to reiterate that if it caused anybody harm or if, you know, there's just questions or 
uh, a recurrence of maybe even past experiences that I had no intention uh, of that by using this book, but I can um, certainly empathize and see how that could uh, how that could happen. So I just want to say that I'm sorry, and if there's any uh, need for help along those lines, I'd be happy to point people to um, the appropriate places to get some help if it um, actually was something that caused harm to you. So, uh, yeah, again, there's not much more to say about that. Um, it's a tension. I'm, I am living with the, my, the tension in my own life, and I didn't, um, didn't mean to put anybody uh, to place a greater burden on anybody than, um, than what the class required and no emotional or psychological or spiritual burden um, did I ever want you to bear that's beyond just studying for a Christian ethics class. So yeah, um, if you have questions about that, you know, you can feel free. We're going to have office hours tomorrow at 8.30 a.m. and we can talk more about that. Or you can feel free to call me or um, text me um, about that. So yeah, I think that's all I'll say about that. I'll, I will be posting a couple more lectures over the course of the next few days just to kind of highlight some of the things that will be important for your review. Okay, hope you have a... Uh, a great Friday, and we'll, I look forward to seeing some of you in the office hours tomorrow.